So guys, this is the getting ready portion of the course. Usually when I arrive at the hotel or Airbnb or house, I always like to go to the door, confirm the room with the planner, the room number, and make sure I'm good to go to go inside of the room. So I'll just do like a nice knock. If they don't answer the first time, I'll, I might knock a little louder and just double check to make sure I'm okay to go in the room. You know, the ladies may be changing. I don't want to, I want to be respectful to their privacy. So once I get that clear or that approval, I go inside, introduce the team, establish myself as the photographer and make sure that they're okay with me taking all the details to take outside or in the room. But um, I always like to make sure I establish myself as the photographer so that they understand that I'm about to get to work. So I usually ask either the wedding planner or the wedding planner's assistant for the details. In a situation where there is no wedding planner, I will ask the bridesmaids or maybe a friend of the bride that might be in the room with them for those details. But immediately we get started with that, kind of knock those out, get those out of the way. And we roughly spend about 15 to 20 minutes on details, not too long because we want to get started with capturing candidates of the girls getting ready, different moments, different laughter. So I don't want to spend too much time on shooting the items. Um, I try to find the best spot I can immediately and just get right to it. So here we have the details. We found a spot outside in the lobby area that had some good natural light. So we decided to take one of the tables and bring it out here into the middle area where we feel like the sun um, is evenly shaded and not too harsh and contrasty. A lot of times we may have to move furniture at the hotel. Um, we just try to respectfully, re respectfully remember to put it back. But a lot of times you may have to shift some things around to get the shot that you need. And that, that comes with building that confidence over time with working with different venues and what have you. Um, to get the shot that you need, I try not to settle just because I'm in a situation where, okay, that furniture is right there and I, I'm limited, I can't do anything. If it's possible, I'm gonna move that thing and try to get the shot that I need. So I have a few details here. We have the shoes, we have a nice rings box, a nice ring box from the bride. Um, we have their rings, we have her garter. I'm waiting on some stationaries, some invitations from the planner. And also she has some little floor items to add to kind of the flat lay. Once she brings that, I'll shoot the entire set. But in the meantime, I'm gonna shoot everything separately, get some close-up shots, some wide shots, and just work with what I have until they get here. I usually like to bring two camera bodies to a wedding just because I don't wanna find myself switching back and forth between lenses. Weddings are very fast paced. So that kind of inconvenience and that split second of having to switch lenses, you never know, you could be missing something. So I like to use two camera bodies a lot of times for weddings. Um, in this situation, I have two Canon R5s, a zoom lens and a maybe an 85 millimeter 2.0 RF lens. It's a macro lens, so I'm able to get those close details of the ring, close up of maybe logos on the shoes, um, certain words on certain items and things like that. So let's get started. The planner actually just brought out the stationaries, so I'm actually gonna shoot that first instead and then I'm gonna add the other pieces to it. So I'm gonna start off with the stationaries first, do some straight on shots. So I like to keep my aperture at about 5.6 or higher because I want to be able to get the details in everything that I'm shooting. If I bring it down to like, let's say 2.0, it might be a little tough to try to get an entire flat lay because it's, a, it's more background blur and I'm only focusing on a more narrow subject. So I have my 28 to 70 here, and I'm gonna just do some just straight above shots. Nothing too crazy to start off. My theme is always starting safe, get the safe shots, and then we can get creative after. So same thing for the details, just straight safe shots, straight above, and then from there, I'll go into different ways I can get a little bit more creative with the details. Do some vertical, some horizontal, some landscape. Start shooting the details one by one. That's good right there. I'm gonna take out a few things, add some different elements. See how we can incorporate that a tad bit. Might throw the rings on there. Right. 
Now in this particular shot, the shoes are actually gonna be cut off from the frame and that's intentional. Still using my 2870 to get these wide shots. Just to add a little bit more details so it's not all just invitations and stationaries. Get some side shots. Cool. With the shoes, I always like to get different perspectives, different angles to really highlight the details of the shoes. Um, you can always start from the top down. That's always a safe way to get started so you can get your thoughts together with shooting the details. And always just move them, just move them around. You never know what you might find. And sometimes you might find a cool shot by accident. You know, that slight little shift of that shoe in front of it or putting one laid flat or one standing up might make a huge difference with the uh, details. So just kind of mixing them up. You know, I, I don't personally think there is a right or wrong way to shoot details. I just feel like you work with your environment and try your best to showcase what the wedding, what the wedding theme is and what it looks like and how maybe you can shoot those details to match that. So this is a very um, bohemian type venue, a lot of plants, a lot of nature, a lot of wood. So incorporating the shoes and having the plants maybe in the background, maybe a good way to incorporate that to follow the theme of the wedding. So now I'm just doing some side angles. I love reflections, so I'm gonna do some low angles to get a little bit creative with the shoes. Switching to the 85 millimeter 2.0 now, it's actually a macro lens, and I wanna give the shoes some compression when I'm shooting it. So I'm gonna just kinda shoot from a distance, get that nice compression in there. There's also a nice cool reflection at the bottom at, on this table, so that's kinda cool. Yeah, just to kinda, just to give some shoes some creativity. Um, might zoom in on the logo, you know, to show where she got the shoes from. Do some low angles of the diamonds on the shoe. But again, I'm not spending a ton of time on this. I'm doing what I can in the, in the short window that I kind of give myself. Now we have the ring shots. Again, playing it safe. I like to just start with a nice, hey, this is what the rings look like back with my 85. Again, it gives it a nice compression, meaning I get a nice background blur. So the subject that I'm focusing on is in focus, but the background is nice and creamy. So when you hear me say compression, that's what I mean. A lot of times these items are very sentimental items to the couple, whether that's the ring, it may be a gift, from a friend or maybe a gift from someone who was married previously before them. A lot of times people like to pass down items that they may have had at weddings. So wedding details are very important because these are very special items to the couple. We're not just shooting these just to say that we shot these details. It's not just something made up as part of the wedding day. It's actually very sentimental and very important items to the couple. So a lot of times couples will ask me, hey, did you get a shot of this or something like that? from the uh, wedding day, it was very meaningful to me. We wanna make sure we capture those because they really look for those things when they're looking through their gallery. So it's something to really keep in mind. Details aren't just, uh, gotta shoot details. It's actually a very, very important part of the day and it gets the day started. I feel like I've gotten the safe shot out of the way. So if I have a little wiggle room in the timeline, I might have a little fun with the details and get a little bit more creative. I am using a a leaf from the venue. Again, this is a very uh, bohemian style, very nature-esque venue. So incorporating those details with the theme of the wedding, I always like to do that whenever I can. Again, this is proceed with caution when you're shooting details. You know, you don't wanna put the rings on top of some water or something like that. Be very careful when you're shooting the details. Don't try so hard to get creative that it may set things behind because you drop the ring in between something or what have you. So tread lightly, you'll get that creative shot. If it's not this wedding, it'll be the next one. So I'm still using the 85 millimeter for this shot because 
although the leaves may be blurred out a bit, you can tell that it's still leaves and it gives it that nice creamy look and your eye still focuses on the rings. So just getting a few different angles, a few different shots. Something creative just to give the gallery a little bit of a variety and a good mix. Okay. Sometimes, like I said, they may have items that were gifted to them. So for example, this ring box may have been gifted by the bride. I try to make sure I incorporate it and utilize that, you know. They didn't bring it here for no reason. So it's best to get as much as you can. Still using the 85 millimeter because these are very close up shots and I wanna get the details of everything inside of the box as well. My ISO is at 100, my shutter speed is at 1 over 320, and my f-stop is at 2.0 because I'm still trying to give it that nice compression and background blur. I may widen it up a bit if I want to get the entire details of the box, but in this situation, I feel like everything in this box, I can narrow the focus down on it. Looks good to me. All right. In this situation, we're outdoors. So I use a lot of natural lighting, but in situations where we're indoors, we may have to use some artificial lighting, meaning a mini video light, a flash, or what have you to get the shot that we need or to get the best lighting situation. Since we were outdoors, I use a lot of natural light, but indoors I may use a video light such as this mini aperture video light, or I may use my on-camera flash on top of my camera to get a nice bounce off the roof or I may use an off-camera flash from my different strobe lights. Whatever the situation may be, I try not to settle in my situation. So I like to make sure I have control of the environment. Since I'm outdoors, it's nice and even, so I decided to stick with the natural route. In this situation, we don't have as much natural light, so I've decided to incorporate some artificial light to have more control over my situation. So still using the 28 to 70, still using the 85, but now I have some artificial light to help me out. So I have a video light here, continuous light, to help me give that even punch. A rule of thumb, usually the closer the light, the softer, and also the closer the light, the more control you have over how you want the shadows to cascade off the details. So I like to use a nice large softbox on my details because it's evenly spread, not too much inconsistencies with shadows and lighting. So let's get straight to it. Still same fundamentals. Play it safe in the beginning. Get those wide shots, wide aperture to make sure everything's in focus. And then I can get creative after I've got my safe shots. So let's get some different angles. Switch it up a little bit. Awesome. Now I'll probably switch over to my 85 to get some more compression. Again, compression means, all it really means is just how much background blur you want from the main subject, from the background. So separating the subject from the background. I like to shoot a bit underexposed because that way in editing or post-production, I can bring out the shadows later. Again, this is a scenario where I felt like I needed artificial lighting. If I had more natural light, again, I would probably stick to that. But in this situation, I wanna play around my lighting so I have more control. I may also use an on-camera flash as well. A lot of times I like to bounce it off of different objects in the room. Um, most of the time with on-camera flashes, if the walls aren't white or close to white, it's gonna give off the color that the light is bouncing off of. So just keep that in mind when you're using your on-camera flash. And that's why I like to use my video light because I can keep that at a neutral color temperature. But it's also good to play around with your different flashes to see the different looks you can get. I'm using my on-camera flash and I'm gonna bounce it off this pillar right here to see how that might look in the picture. And I'm still using my video light as a fill light. Awesome. Beautiful, I love it. I love that the light is kind of narrowed in on the details and everything around it is a little bit darker. So it draws the eye to those details and it's making the colors pop. So. You can use artificial light in situations where the lighting still looks good because it gives it a different look. It separates that natural look from that editorial look when you're shooting your details. So it's really, you just kind of play around with it and see what look you're drawn to and what works for you. 
This is what I like to do depending on my situation. Details are done. I think we got a nice different variation and different angles of them. So I'm happy with them. Just to recap, we used a 28 to 70 and an 85 millimeter. The 28 to 70 was to get those nice wide establishing shots. The 85 millimeter was to get those up close and personal intimate shots to give it a nice background blur to separate the items from the background. So now we already said hi to the bride. We've already introduced ourselves, knocked on the door to make sure everything was okay. We're gonna gather all these details, head back to the room and give these to either the planner, the planner's assistant, the maid of honor, or just one of the bridesmaids to make sure someone has them. Hopefully the bride is almost done with her makeup at that point and we're just gonna check on her to see where they're at. And hopefully we can get started with doing some shots of some people now. We're here now for the groom prep and his solo shots. So usually when I come into the room, I always like to introduce myself again, the same way with the bride, same way with the girls, establish that fact that I am the photographer and I'm introducing myself to make sure that they're comfortable with me and things like that. I usually have my second shooter with the groom and the groomsmen while I'm with the girls. But in this situation, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna show you guys how we capture the groom at his room, and then eventually we'll take him out for some solo shots. For this, I like to use primes and zoom lenses because with getting ready photos, there's a lot of things going on. So I wanna have a variety of different lenses in different situations. I'll have my 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 85 millimeter, and also my 28 to 70 or 24 to 70 millimeter to get that versatility with angles. So I like to start with the groom halfway dressed. He can already have his shirt on, his pants, and I'll instruct him to have one of his guys, usually the best man, to help him put on some of his accessories and things like that and kind of get those candid moments between him and his brothers just to kind of establish those getting ready photos. So let's get started. I like to start off with my safe lens. So in this situation, I'm using my 28 to 70. He's already here sitting down. This corner of the room is a little tight. So I love to use my 28 to 70 in this situation to have a variety of different options and angles to use as opposed to a fixed lens where I'm forced to use just that focal length. So he's already sitting down. I'll probably start with some shots of him while he's already there. So let's get started. So Ralph, you're already sitting down. Let's have you maybe turn towards the window a little bit. I wanna get that light from the window to hit his face. And could you just lean forward and maybe have one hand on your lap like this. Boom, cool. So this is his, I'm not fully dressed yet, but I'm thinking about the wedding day. I'm getting ready, I'm soaking in the moment. I wanna capture those shots before he gets fully dressed to really tell that story in the wedding gallery. All right, let's get some shots. Could you just turn your head out the window a little bit more? Perfect. Let that light kind of cascade off his face a tad bit. We can kind of make it look like we're, he's putting on his shoes. So I may have him take off some items, put them back on, just so we can show that he was getting ready. Kind of like fake it till you make it a little bit. Um, so you can take a shoe off and then just kind of act like you're putting it on. Yep. Perfect. So I'm getting some landscape shots, some vertical shots, just to kind of get a different vibe and different angles. I also like to break down my frames when it comes to pictures. So what I mean by that is I'll get different sections of his body that's getting ready to kind of show that, that emphasis on what's being prepped. So in this situation, it's his feet. So I'll get some low angles. So it's just really from the wrist down to his feet. Cool. So I'm just gonna get you, I'm just gonna kind of get you just kind of fixing up yourself, um, fixing up your watch, putting on your imaginary cufflinks. Awesome. And then again, I'm, I'm framing, so I might do different sections of his, of his body. So right now I'm just doing his top half. I'll close in and just do his torso section. So pretty much the bottom of the neck to the, maybe the top of the belt. Awesome. Hold that right there. A lot of times, especially as photographers, we'll tell somebody to hold that shot or hold that pose. And that's okay because you wanna get the shot that you need. And sometimes you might have to tell them to stop. So just hold that right there. And you can keep going. Best day of my life. 
you know awesome hold your bring your hand back on that watch right there i can just hold that hand up a tad bit bring it a little lower sorry yep right there and just fix up your watch while you're looking out the window yep you can fix up your waist you know what i'm saying act like you're pulling your pants up awesome yep he has glasses so we can utilize that as well you can act like you're adjusting your glasses yep you see clearly yep <laughs> awesome and a lot of times you know wedding days are already stressful as, as it is there's a lot of anxiety there's a lot of tension built up it's okay to crack a few jokes lighten up the room everything doesn't always have to be so a b c one two three you can lighten up the room crack some jokes just to make them kind of feel like you're not just here to do your job you know this is someone getting married it's the biggest day of their life let them feel comfortable and warm them up a bit cool all right all right so i'm gonna try to do some creative shots a lot of times I have my camera, especially with these mirrorless cameras, I have it in a uh, auto focus eye detection setting. Um, in this situation, I'm gonna use my manual focus points on my camera to have more control of what I want to focus the lens on. So, Ralph, let's see. Could you kind of turn that way straight ahead? Yep, just straight ahead like that. And then act like you're fixing one side of your glasses. Do the other side. So the reason why I'm telling him to do the other side is because his hand will be blocking his face right there. So just kind of be mindful of those things where little micro adjustments can make a huge difference when it comes to a wedding day photo. So turn your head a little bit towards me right there. Hold that and just hold your glasses right there. Look straight ahead again for me while you're still holding the glasses. Yep. And then pick your chin up a tad bit. Awesome. Perfect. Now let me have you turn that way, all the way around. Yep, back towards me. And bring your hands in your pockets. Go a little closer to the, to the window. Matter of fact, you can bring one hand up on the glass. Yep. And turn your head to the right. Look to the right, yep. Hold that right there. Perfect. Kind of look back over your shoulder a tad bit, yep. Now bring both hands in your pockets. Awesome. So with the window being the object as the background that I'm shooting directly into, this will more than likely be a silhouette shot for me because a lot of times when you're shooting towards a window with the subject there, the background is going to be blown out. So I'm going to use this as kind of that creative silhouette shot. Tell a bit more of the story for the wedding day, him just by the window thinking. Awesome. Beautiful, man, good stuff. Can I do one more of you? So stay like that. Um, no, turn towards straight, yep. And let me just have your hands maybe like this, like kind of like you're rubbing your hands together. Almost like you're praying, but um, you can kind of tilt your head down a tad bit and um, just close your eyes. Awesome, man, beautiful, love it. Now that we're done with the groom getting ready photos, I have his groomsman now here with me to help him get fully dressed into his wedding tux. So once he's fully dressed, we'll probably take him out for some more solo portraits as well as group shots with his groomsmen. So let me have you guys, you guys can just go next to him right now. We still have him by the window. The reason why I like to keep this window covered with the, with the blinds is because it kind of acts like a soft box instead of it being so harsh with the sunlight coming through the window. So let me have you come by the window, Ralph, right there. Okay, let's have somebody help him with his bow tie. Y'all know how to put on a bow tie, right? About to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have you turn a little bit more this way. Come around a little bit more, Slim. Like back, yep. Just because I want that light to really hit his face. And again, fellas, happy thoughts. You know, Daniel, even though you're in the back not really doing that right now, you can still kind of joke with them, tap them on the shoulder, you know what I'm saying? Really hype them up for the day. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Just keep kind of adjusting his bow tie. I want to get different angles of him being adjusted. Perfect. Ralph, how you feeling? Doing good. Doing good, man? Throughout the wedding day, I always like to check on 
the bride and groom, just kind of double check with them. How you feeling? How you doing? You need some water? Just to kind of see how they are mindset wise. Looks good, man. Looks good. Can you just kind of adjust the bow tie? Just like straighten it a little bit. Perfect. Why are you putting on the bow tie? Maybe like you guys can kind of clown them a little bit. Like, <laughs> just kind of clown them. You know, he's getting married today. That's a wrap, man. That's it. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can have a, a, a post bachelor party. You can help him with his, maybe his watch or what have you. Just kind of adjust him, you know. Awesome. Uh, come on this side, cause I want the light to hit you. Yeah, yep. Hold that right there. Just getting some close ups of the watch first. Some low angles. With me having the guys help out the groom before the wedding day, he has, he has groomsmen. These are these are his 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 friends that he's had relationships with, build bonds with. So I want to be able to create some sort of connection between them before the wedding day, not just them sitting around. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm just a groomsman. I want to show that they have a genuine relationship and that they're they they've been with him from day one all the way up to him getting ready to walk down the aisle. So something to keep in mind when you're telling a story for the wedding day, it's not the best to tell a story when things are just kind of sitting there. I always try to find ways to make connections between whether that's between the, the detail and the groom, the groom with his groomsmen and things like that to show that everyone in the wedding is a, a special person in that couple's life. Then come around a little bit more so I can see you as well. Yep. Awesome, awesome. So I'm using the 85 right now just to show that I'm from a distance. It's kind of a moment where He's putting on his jacket. So I want to give off the vibe in this situation that the perspective is from a distance, that I'm actually not in the room, even though I am in the room. So now that we have the jacket on, he's fixed up. Let me just have you guys, you know, proud of your brother, clap him up, crack some jokes. You can still pick on him. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful, beautiful. Love it, love it. Hey, love it. I may also ask the guys, you know, to say a few words to the groom as he gets ready to go down the aisle. If there's like any words of encouragement or advice or what have you, you know, sometimes, sometimes the groomsmen may already be married or what have you. So him hearing that perspective is always good as well to get him prepped for the day. So now that we're getting our safe shots out the way, I've decided to get a little bit more creative. I noticed this TV where most people might find it as a obstacle or a distraction or obtrusive to the actual shot, I noticed that it has a reflection on it. So I'm gonna let the camera work the environment, not let the environment work my camera. So seeing that we have a reflection, we can kind of get creative and have you look out the window real quick, Ralph. That TV is giving off a nice reflection. So it's really cool. Bring your right hand in your pocket. Hold your jacket like this, almost like you're about to button it. Yeah. Still look out the window, yep. Perfect, and then you can look at me. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna show him this shot that I was trying to do. A lot of times, I like to show them a little sneak peek to get them a little bit more excited because sometimes I may give them a pose and they're like, what is he doing? So let me show you what I was trying to do, okay? So you, remember I told you the TV was reflection. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool. Groom's happy. All right, <laughs> let's get back to it. <laughs> Let me show y'all. Nice. Hold that right there. Let me have you fix your, act like you're fixing your bow tie. With both hands, yep. Hold that. Close your eyes. I know, it's, I know it sounds weird, but you'll understand later. Hold that. Nice. All right, look at me right here, serious face, yep. Adjust your bow tie a little bit straighter. Other way, there we go, nice. All right, you can drop your hand and then hold the glasses again. Do your other hand, there we go. All right, cool, look it straight at me right here. And then let me have you look out the window again. I'm gonna have you be looking away a lot, you know. Those looking away shots are always really cool. Awesome.
She's wrapping up her makeup. So since she's pretty much done, I like to call them fake up shots. So I'm just gonna instruct the makeup artist here to give me some different variations and different poses with her hands while I get those shots to make it look like she's still doing her makeup. How you ladies doing? Y'all good? So I'm gonna have you guys just do some fake up shots. I want to really highlight, you know, her getting her makeup done. Okay. So what I'm gonna have you do first is um, this is for lips, correct? Yeah. So you can just have you literally just okay. micro movements, just touching up her lips. Um, as she's doing that, Aisha, you can um, look out the window for me and just hold it right there until I say the next move. So I'm using the 35 millimeter and the 85 millimeter. The 85 is for the close up shots, like on her lips and maybe her getting touch ups on her, maybe her eyeshadow and things like that. The 35 is for the more wide shots, more establishing angles and getting the entire room to tell the entire story. So I'm just gonna start off with my 85 and get some close ups on her, her lipstick. So you can just go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. Aisha, can you look at me right here? Perfect. Nice, nice, nice. Close your eyes. Beautiful. After about three or four shots, I always just like to move my body and try different angles so I'm not repetitively getting the same shots. That's beautiful. So I just switched over to the 35 now, doing some wide shots, just to kind of use these as establishing shots now. F-stop is at 1.8, shutter speed one over 200. With the F-stop being at 1.8, I'm getting that nice compression, that nice background blur. So I switched back over to my 85 millimeter to get these beauty shots. She's getting her makeup done, you know? She's gonna look flawless and stunning for her wedding day. We wanna make sure we get nice close-up shots for the bride, as well as promote the makeup artist, you know? All the vendors in involved with the wedding all played their part. So this is also a good portfolio for them, but it's also a really, really nice way to establish how the bride got wedding ready for that day. Part your lips a tad bit. So when I tell them to part their lips a tad bit, I believe most people call it a smize. It's just a very striking pose that I have most brides do to really show that fierceness and it's a very powerful look. Close your eyes right there. Tilt your head straight, Aisha, like straight, and then look straight at me. Bring the brush down a little bit lower. Okay. Yep, perfect. So I kind of did half of her face, so like, Ooh. Like that, you know? Mm. Okay. You know? Okay. I'm getting a little creative. And, and you know, I like to read. Ooh, right, the good contrast, yeah. And I like to read the room. If the bride is really bringing that energy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed off of it, you know what I'm saying? If I notice that they're a little bit more reserved or a little bit more shy, it may take some more work, but if they're already coming with good energy, match it and see how far you can take them. And bring the brush over to your right. Yep, right there. And then I should look at me right here. What? We don't need no more, we done. We, this is, this is it, yeah. We done with the wedding. <laughs> Again, you know, I like to crack jokes with the, I like the green in the background. Yeah. Again, warming up to them, showing them different shots, just to kind of get them excited for the day because when you're shooting them, they're like, I wonder how I look. So just showing them a little preview gets them a little excited for the day. She's still looking as you can see. Yeah? How do you look? Awesome, awesome. Good job. Who did your makeup? Awesome. Makeup is done. Now we're gonna have the hairstylist come in and do some last minute touch-ups. Right after that, we're gonna bring in her girls, do some group shots, have them go get dressed, and wrap up with some more solo shots with her and her robe. After that, she's gonna put on her dress. Could you, could you sit more straight towards me? Yeah. Cool. But yeah, just adjusting. And then you can just kind of keep your eyes low for now. Um, turn your head straight towards me. Yep. Perfect. And you'll stand directly behind her, if you can, yep. And I, I want it to look very symmetrical with your hands. So like you're just adjusting her headpiece, yep. Wow, beautiful. Hold that. This 35 millimeter is also a macro as well. 
So even though it is a wide angle lens, I can still get close and get those detailed shots. Beautiful. Oh, Aisha, look up at me right here. Nice. She said guns. So just like, so just fluff them. And I'm not even here. You kind of just looking off, you know? Yep. Carefree, getting ready for my big day. You can give me some laughs, some giggles. Perfect. And real quick, just give me a look right there over your shoulder at me. Boom. Wow. The bridesmaids are here now, so we're gonna get some rope shots with her and her girls. Hey, ladies. Hey. Can we have you guys sit next to the bride? Sure. Yep. You're in the middle, you're the focal point. Let's see. So, the room, the lighting is a little all over the place, so I decided to bring my video light to give it a nice fill on them. If I didn't, there would have been some harsh shadows cascading off their face, and it doesn't give the most flattering look, especially with them getting their makeup done and things like that. We wanna make sure we highlight that the best way we can. So it's a tight space, so I'm gonna use my 28 to 70 to make sure that even though it's a little bit closed in, I have the flexibility to move back and forth without feeling too, too far, too close, and having to worry about what focal length I'm using. So the 28 to 70 is a very, very nice sweet spot to really, really do what I need to do. So. I like to start safe, as usual. Start off safe, creative later. All right, ladies, you guys can look at me, and we're just gonna smile for this one, okay? Just smiling straight at the camera. My 28 to 70 right now, I'm using it to make sure I have as much different angles as I can. The room, not that it's small, but for getting ready photos, I like to have as much versatility as I can. So the 28 to 70 is a nice sweet spot to get those shots I need. Beautiful ladies, show some teeth. You can look towards your girls. Tell them how good they look. Yep, look at each other. Give each other some smiles. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. Show the ring off. Show the ring at me, Aisha, just kind of hold it out, boom. And just hold it out towards me, yep. Hold it out like, bam, like, I'm getting married. Boom, girls look at her. Beautiful, look at your girls again. Nice. So remember I was saying my constant light is helping fill in those harsh shadows. This is how it would look without it. You see a lot of shadows around the nose, under the eyes, and we don't want that. They spend their hard earned money on makeup to look as beautiful as they can for the wedding day. They need to look tip top shape. Beautiful. Let me have you both kind of rest your head on her shoulder. Yep. <laughs> That's all right. You can put your hand, other hand, other hand. On her shoulder. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Don't smile, ladies. Awesome. I'm just going to get a close up real quick. There we go. Perfect. And hey, I like that. Beautiful. Can we do that turn up one more time? What you just did, Aisha? Yep. Love it, love it, love it. She really wants to do this pillow fight. Nice, give me some laughs, some <laughs> Awesome. Can we do serious? Nice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> get the laugh out, get it, get it out. Yep. All right, there you go. Nice. Perfect, perfect. Are you should look out the window. You look that way. Look that way. Yeah. Hold that. All right, Aisha, look at me. Boom. Wow, hold that right there, ladies. Keep looking at me, Aisha. Nice. Ladies, look at, uh, towards Aisha right there. Beautiful. So you two look back at each other. You two look back at each. You, <laughs> you two look back at each other, and Aisha, look at me. This is gonna be good for the bloopers. Oh, that. You guys can't uh, look at each other? Yeah. <laughs> Without, but these are really good though because it really shows their relationship as friends. See, every time they look at each other, they're cracking up. So that just that just goes to show that connection. And I'm, I'm not gonna stop shooting because of that. That's not a, that's not a mistake. That's a genuine moment. 
Can we can we try it one more time? Yeah. One more time. <sighs> Ladies in the back, go a little closer to each other. Boom. And then I used to smile looking at me. Give me some big laughs, ladies. <laughs> Beautiful. Love it. I would consider just going from safe to creative now. Okay, let's see. All right, I like what you're doing with your hands. Yeah, I like what you're doing. That's good. No, I like both hands. Everybody do something different and then you have one. Yep, awesome. So it's like a subtle flex of the ring too a little bit, you know? Maybe do the other hand then. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So I'm still using my constant light on the side because it's really giving that nice fill light. Again, if it's off, they're gonna look off. So that shadow, we don't want a lot of harsh shadows around their eyes and under their chin and things like that. We wanna make sure that light is filling in their face completely. So that makeup is popping and they look evenly lit. Let's get some more laughing, ladies. Some more, some more candids. You with your girls. Yeah, yep. And then just keep going. Candids, cracking up. A few more, a few more. Beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. Girls are done. We're gonna have them go back out, get dressed, and wrap up with the bride with some more solo shots in her robe. Then it's time for her to get dressed. Girls are gone. Now we're gonna have the bride in her robe, solo shots. I like to do close in, medium, and wide shots. So I'll usually start around the medium range with my 28 to 70. And that just means around the 45 millimeter to 50 millimeter mark. Beautiful. That curtain right here, just kind of hold it like this. Yep. Still looking out the window, but bring your eyes to me. Yep. Perfect. Awesome, let's switch it up a tad bit. Maybe you could bring your hand like to your hair. Okay. That's your favorite side? <laughs> like, girl, both sides are good. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. So the bride just mentioned to me that she has a side that she prefers, or she might have different suggestions on what she likes to do in different poses. Don't let your ego get in the way of creating a shot that might be best just because the bride might have a suggestion. Perfect. Can you kind of like, yeah, like boomerang it? Like you're going into it, yep. So it's almost like you're walking towards me, but not really, yep. And go. Awesome, beautiful. One more time. And boomerang it, yep. Just keep looking in different directions, little micro movements. So like I said, if the bride already kind of has that natural confidence when it comes to posing, I still make sure I guide them. But at the same time, I don't want to do too much if they're a natural. They kind of got it. I don't want to throw them off their rhythm. A lot of times you may hear me say, pick your chin up for the bride. It's a more flattering look when the chin is a bit more raised because we don't want that, that effect where it looks like they might have a double chin or something. You don't, I'm just saying, we don't want, we don't want it to look that way. Nice, don't smile, yep. And look at me, just coming in a little bit closer. Oh, that, nice. Pick your chin up a tad bit and just close your eyes. Boom. Still using my 28 to 70. It's a very versatile lens, especially for getting ready photos. And it allows me to not have to switch lenses as much. The getting ready part of the wedding day is always a lot going on. So I want a lens that I can really not have to worry about switching. You can bring your hand right here. Boop. And look up at me here. Awesome. For brides who may need a bit more guidance, I like to tell them to try to exaggerate every part of their body from head to toe. So that's pointing their toes, straining out their back, exaggerating their shoulders, and chin up. Awesome. You can lean forward a little bit more. I like, I like that, that was really cool. Yep. And then look towards me. Nice. Hold that right there. Awesome. And then back at me. Perfect. Let's get some smiles in. What a nice mix. Awesome. Also, another thing I like to do is 
utilize the bridesmaids. If there's little micro adjustments that needs to be made, it's okay to have them come in, make those adjustments so that she looks the best that she can. A lot of times we may get caught up in that shot, you know, like, ooh, ooh, what a great shot. We may miss the little details, like something being off. So having those bridesmaids step in to really help out, it plays a big role. The bride is writing her vows right now, so I wanted to find a lens that really show that it gives her a sense of privacy. Even though I am with her in the room, the 85 millimeter feels like it's a good sweet spot because I'm at a distance, so it doesn't show that I'm close up to her. If I use a lens like a 35 millimeter or a 24 to 70, I have to get a little bit close to her, and I feel like that's a little bit of an invasion of privacy as she writes down her vows. So the 85 millimeter is that sweet spot for me to really show that I'm shooting her from a distance and kind of telling that story of her writing down these, one of the most important things she's ever gonna write down in her life. Bride is dressed, she looks great. Now we're gonna get some solos of her as she puts on her dress. And we're also gonna have her bridesmaids help her out with just kind of fixing up the bag, getting some candid shots of her girls, helping her get ready for the time to walk down the aisle. I like, I like that you're looking at me and the girls are just fixing you up. Perfect. Beautiful. Ladies, look at her. You're fixing her dress. Let me just zoom in a little bit, get some shots, some different perspectives. You can smile, yep. Try to be as natural as you can. Yep. Are right, you look back at me? Nice. Nice, nice. Hold that right there. Keep looking back at me, yep. Look back at your train. Or kind of back at Bianca right there. Yeah. You don't gotta actually look at her, but. <laughs> like I can't turn my head back around. Awesome. And then this last time, ladies, just give me some smiles while you're looking at her. Perfect. Beautiful. And then can we just take a picture together right here? Looking towards me while we have you. Awesome. Right, what a beautiful moment. Her and her girls, right before the wedding day. Beautiful, look at each other ladies. Give me some smiles, some candies. Tell her how good she looks. <laughs> she said, I know. <laughs> beautiful, can we get one serious one? Hold it, yep. Beautiful. Nice. Love it. Thank you so much, ladies. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, at this point of the wedding day, we're a little bit pressed for time. Not all the time, but this is usually that part of the wedding day where we might not have as much wiggle room when it comes to time. So that's when I like to really turn up my creativity and working under crunch time because I don't have a lot of time to stick to the same pose. So I'm gonna work a little bit faster with switching up the poses. So even though I only have maybe five or 10 minutes, I'm gonna, give her at least 10 to 15 poses real fast before we start the ceremony. All right, let's do this. So just straight on looking at me. Perfect. And let's just bring your hands on your hips, switch it up, yep. Look out the window. While your head's out at the window, look at me, your eyes, yep. Perfect. Let's get some smiles. I think I counted about five different pictures right there. That's funny. And look towards me here. Awesome. Perfect. Bring that right hand down a little lower. Nice. And just follow me with your eyes. And right there, just close your eyes. Hold that. All right, I'm just gonna do some beauty shots of you and I think we're okay. Right there, look straight at the camera. Part your lips a tad bit. Awesome. Turn your body a little bit more this way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Right there. This hand. Psh. Left hand, your ring hand. Yeah. Awesome. And look at me here, yep. Beautiful, part your lips a tad bit. And then turn your head straight towards me. Just boom, yep, hold that. Hold that. Close your eyes, part your lips. Now bring your head down a tad bit. I want it to look like you're just fixing your headpiece. So with your hands, use both hands. Awesome. Could you give me a soft smile? Bring your head down a little bit more to show the head piece, yep. And you can pick it up a tad bit, that look a little crazy. <laughs> right there, yep. Here, see this hand? Boom, and then chin up a tad bit. Turn your body towards me. 
I know it seems like I'm going a little fast with the posing, but cer ceremony's coming soon, so no problem. And look at me. Close your eyes. Hold that. Okay, I'm gonna do just like a few and then boom. All right. Awesome. And look at me. Lovely, beautiful. I think we got enough within that time crunch. Again, that was about five minutes and we were able to get, I would count at least 15 to 20 poses. So now we're gonna make sure the groom is okay in position for the first look. Once he's in position, we'll bring her down and get the first look going. So now that we've done all the getting ready shots and some solos of the groom upstairs, we found this nice, beautiful atrium out on the first floor to get some more shots of the guys. I'm gonna use my 50 millimeter and 35 millimeter, my prime lenses, because I feel like I have more control and there's not a lot of movement going on. So let's get started. All right, so for this one, fellas, let me have your hands in your pockets. Oh. Yep, so we're starting off with the safe shots, just straight on, nothing too crazy. Make sure we get the safe shots out the way. I wouldn't work backwards and do creative first and safe second because we don't know what that timeline might be like with the planner. Start with the safe so at least you got that out the way. So if you didn't get anything else, they got the pictures they need. At least they got pictures of them there. So I just wanna create some movement. Could y'all just, in your position, just y'all can dap each other up, clown each other, whatever y'all wanna do, but try not to hide your face too much. So like still look at him, but don't like turn around completely. Yeah, just showing love to him, clowning him. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Very important, very important to establish that connection between the guys, like I said. These are childhood friends, fraternity brothers, classmates, what have you. So just having them stand there, to me, I feel like it, it, it doesn't do them justice to show the friendship that they had, so. Hey, that was good, man, but do that again. Do that again, one more time. One more time. Yep, just 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds of it. Yep, go. Yep. I'm about to tell you, yep. Again, it's always okay to tell them to do it again. Don't feel bad about telling somebody to repeat something to get the shot that you need, because that shows that you're not letting the wedding walk all over you, in a sense. All right, now that we've gotten some of the safe shots out of the way, I feel like we can get a little bit more creative with the guys. All right, fellas, um, I feel like those are like the straight on like safe shots, so we can get a little more creative. So we're gonna do like a, like a V. So <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Um, <laughs> you sure? Um, so bring your, bring your shoulder behind him. Not all the way, yeah, yeah. Uh, you go in a little bit more, yep. And then you go behind him a little bit more, yep. So turn your body out that way a little bit, and then you turn out that way. You mind if I push you around a little? No, you can. Okay, yeah. Uh, you can turn your leg. Okay. Boom. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're looking straight at me. You two are looking off to the distance. Yeah, but you're looking straight at me, okay? So if you guys notice, I, I approached him and I grabbed his shoulders and twisted him around. I always like to ask, you okay with me adjusting you with my hands, you know? Just always like to make sure that if you're physically touching your subject, just kind of give him that disclaimer that, hey, I'm about to move you if that's okay. So now we're getting a little bit more creative with the shots. I'm gonna use my 35 millimeter to get this entire scenery. So I'm gonna pose the guys real quick for a, a little bit more spiced up shot. All right, fellas, so you guys remember what I was saying. So serious, All right, looking out that way. But look up. Don't look too high up, cause then it'll be, yeah, there you go. And then, yep, you're looking straight at me, okay? Ralph, let me have you rub your hands. Birdman, I also like to vocalize to them that I'm just getting different angles. So if it looks like I'm just doing a million of the same shots, I'm really not. I'm, I might be zooming in, I might be moving in, out, moving in, getting different variations, different shots. But I like to explain that to them so they're not just sitting there waiting for the next pose. All right. Could y'all look at him, but seriously? Like seriously, yeah. Hold that. I'm going right in front of you, Ralph. Perfect. Awesome, love it. All right, we're gonna try some. Um, it might sound a little crazy, right. but you're still gonna stay right there, but y'all gonna keep walking back and forth. So the goal is that he's in focus, but y'all blurred. I'm gonna keep my hand as steady as possible on the groom, 
but since the two groomsmen are moving, they're gonna have a blurred effect. So you're not gonna really see them, but the groom is gonna be in focus. Just to kind of create a creative shot, something unique for the groom to put him in focus in this situation. So my shutter speed is at one over six, f-stop 5.6, and ISO is at 100. All right, let's do this. Yep, good stuff. One more time, one more time. Try to meet right there in front of Ralph. And got it. So now we're here for the bridal party section of the course. This is the group photos. I have a two light setup with my flashes to make sure that both sides of the group are illuminated evenly. Once I establish my first shots, the safe ones, the, the pretty much straight on shots, we'll get into the creative mixing of poses, maybe utilize some different chairs, furniture to really mix it up to have that aesthetic where the gallery has a nice variation of different shots. So right now I have the girls on the girl side with the bride and the guys on the groom side just to kind of keep it symmetrical, but it's always okay to mix it up, have them pair with the person that they might have walked down the aisle with, or any way you can kind of find a way to make it look like a, a nice group photo. But again, there are no particular rules when it comes to posing of the bridal party. I just always like to start off with the safe shots, straight on, and then we can start mixing it up. Another reason why I'm using flash now, flash generally generates more power than continuous light. And I wanna make sure, again, everybody's illuminated. So when I have my two flash set up, I know that I can ensure enough power to make sure they're illuminated. So now I'm gonna head over to them, get them posed, and hopefully everybody at this point is not too turnt from drinking. Let's see how it goes. Hey guys, let's do some, let's do some body party poses. Um, how y'all feeling, y'all good? Great, great. Okay, cool. So we're just gonna start off with safe and easy, everyone looking towards the camera smiling, okay? Uh, fellas, I like the hands, maybe right over left. That's cool. Um, you can bring your hand around your wife's waist and maybe hand in the pocket. So ladies, you're doing good. Always remember bouquets at the belly button. You don't want them too high or too low. And you don't want it blocking too much of the nice dress. You feel me? Um, there's a little bit of a gap right here. Yep, close the gap. Awesome. All right, a little micro adjustment. Fellas, turn in a little bit that way and just bring your right hand in your pockets. Boom, hold that. Beautiful. Everybody's serious for this one. GQ, if it looks like I'm just taking a million shots, it's because I'm, I'm zooming in and out. I'm doing different angles, okay? Beautiful. Awesome. Now I'm gonna incorporate some chairs just to kind of mix it up, give a variety of different bridal party poses. A lot of times the bridal party might be joking around. It's a lot of different personalities, which I understand, you know? It's a big group. That's okay. Just try to maintain your composure and don't let them walk over you. I always like to get close to them so they can hear me instead of me trying to yell at them from a distance all the time because they might have had a few drinks or two or what have you, or they might just be trying to have a good time. So do your best to really try to get their attention the group photos should go a lot smoother that way. Nice. I'm gonna do a turn up after this. Perfect. All right, y'all. So for this one, I know we wanna get to the reception. Can y'all just turn up like y'all had like 10 shots in y'all for like the next 20 seconds? But don't leave your spot too much. So like, I wanna get a lot of candies, a lot of fun shots, laughing, you know what I'm saying? So you can turn up, you can back it up on and do whatever you wanna do. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> She's she like, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna say three, two, one, and you guys go, okay? All right, three, two, one. You guys just turn up. Just have fun with it. Yep, keep going, keep going. Yep, yep, yep. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's go. Perfect. Oh, hold on. Perfect, perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Just give me some laughs, some candids. Look at each other. Beautiful, beautiful. Bride and groom, bride and groom, let's kiss. Let's kiss, y'all. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Kiss, and y'all just cheer them on. Just turn up for them. There we go. Let's get some claps. Slim, go a little closer, get a little closer in, yep. There we go. Yeah, beautiful. Love it. Awesome, 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 awesome. 
I already got you and the guys. Let me get you and the girls really quick. All right, ladies ready? All right, ladies, remember flowers at the belly button? And then just look straight at me, okay? I have my 28 to 70 right now. Very good versatile lens for group photos. It can go all the way to F2. So that gives me a nice compression still for it being a zoom lens that is amazing. Beautiful ladies, let's get some smiles. Lovely. Look at each other, give me some candids. Girl talk. <laughs> I like the, I like that one. I, that, <laughs> that was good. One more time. Beautiful. Still using my two flashes. Since they're already there, I don't see any reason to adjust. It's still giving off amazing light. And I'm very, very happy with it. Everything looks even. There's no shadows falling off their chin or face. Very happy with it. You look to your left. You look to your right. I usually look straight at me, okay? Awesome. Beautiful. Hold that right there. A few more. Can we just get some candles of y'all? Turning up, laughing, smiling. Yep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yep, yep. Dope, 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 dope. Okay, okay. Don't hide your face with the flowers. Don't hide your face with the flowers, yep. If y'all do that again, then yep. There we go. Beautiful. Love it, ladies. Love it, love it, love it. Just last one. I just want one of you guys just kind of leaning towards her and then we're good. Beautiful, hold that right there. Nice, don't smile. Love it. Thank you so much, ladies. We're here for the first look now. Ralph was in position. So I always like to have my second shooter at a perspective where he's in front of the groom shooting down towards the bride, getting different perspective of the groom in focus or the bride in focus. So my second shooter will usually have an 85 millimeter or a 70 to 200, a more zoomed in lens, while I'm gonna be off to the side shooting straight on. Kind of the more safe shots. Like I said, I'm always gonna play it safe, but my second shooter has a little bit more wiggle room to get a little bit more creative. So I'll have either a 24 to 70, 35 or 50, usually in this situation. For first looks, I always like to coach my couples on how to position themselves and what to do when the bride approaches them and how to kind of react to each other once you guys actually see each other. So in this situation, Ralph is here faced off looking away. When she comes to you, she's gonna tap this shoulder. You're gonna, so just kind of follow what I'm doing. You're gonna turn that way. You see, what, see where I'm facing? Yep. Straight that way, because I'm shooting this way. So I wanna be able to get both of your faces in my shot. And this is your background. All right. That makes sense? Yep. She has the rundown already as well, so she kind of knows what to do. When you turn around and see her, don't worry about what to do next right away. Just kind of, Enjoy the moment, soak it in. You can hug her, you can talk to her, you can kiss her, you can do whatever you wanna do, but don't let us limit you. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. All right, she's coming soon. Okay. All right, cool, cool. Okay, we just coached the groom on what to do with the first look. The bride doesn't know what to do yet. So now I'm gonna give her the rundown on how we usually capture a first look and what to do once he turns around. So, Aisha, once you get to him, I'm gonna play him for a second, okay? You're gonna tap this shoulder. You're right. He's gonna turn around this way, like straight ahead this way. So as you're coming around, since I'm shooting this way, I want you to go like this. See what I'm doing? Um, you're, you're literally rotating your body to face that way. And then he, all the way over here. And then he's gonna turn and look at you this way. Got it? Makes Feel good about it? Okay. And also when he turns around and sees you and you see him, just soak in the moment. Don't worry about what to do next. He might hug you, he might kiss you, whatever. Just enjoy it. And then we'll pose y'all after, okay? Cool. As she's walking down, my second shooter is getting more of a compressed perspective. So he's gonna have the 85 millimeter at some point focused on him, some points focused on her, where he's blurred and she's blurred, and they're alternating who's in focus until they get to the same level where they're both gonna be in focus. Once he's done and she taps him across his shoulder, he's gonna rotate around so he's not in my shot because I'm gonna be shooting straight on this way, getting those 
those first look moments while he's gonna be rotating from left and right, getting his face and her face. Now that she's in position, I'm gonna have her, well actually before I have her tap him, Aisha, do you wanna do anything like towards the camera, something goofy or something before you tap him? Like since you're behind him and he doesn't see you yet? <laughs> you can look towards me again, do something funny. Grab his butt or something. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so whenever you're ready, now you're gonna tap that side. Ralph, whatever, the shoulder that she taps, that's the way you turn, okay? Left. Awesome, yep. Other way, Ralph, other way, other way. Yep, we gotta see your face. Other way, yep. There we go. You almost got us. Beautiful. Yep, yep. So right now I'm just letting them kind of have their moment. I'm not gonna give them much direction yet. Just, just genuine moments between them. I don't wanna interrupt it so soon. Now that it's kind of starting to die down a little bit, that's when I'll probably go in to give them some direction, see how they're feeling. Hey guys. Hey. How y'all feeling? Great. You mind taking some pictures now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll cool, 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 cool. All right. Now we're at the bride and groom portrait section of the course. If the ceremony decor isn't done yet, I will have my second shooter assist me with lighting and assisting and things like that. If it is done, I usually send them over to start capturing those decor photos as well as guests coming in. But in this situation, it's not done yet. So I'm gonna have him help me out with portraits. I'm gonna take them around the venue, get a lot of different shots, solos of him, solos of her, and get straight into it. So again, safety first, creative shots later. I always like to start with the easiest poses, holding hands, hold each other. Then we can get creative when we feel like we've gotten enough establishment shots. All right guys, so just to start off, I like where you are right now. Maybe you just bring that left hand on his chest. Boom, and then Ralph, just bring your hands around her waist right there. So I'm gonna have my video light on. Getting a little bit dark out. I wanna give them a little bit more fill, a little bit more punch. So that extra light is gonna help me out right now. Even though it's not completely dark yet, I want them to really stand out in this situation. Beautiful. I'm using my 50 millimeter right now. It's a, it's a, I feel a great mid, mid-range focal uh, range lens to give me that nice sweet spot, not too close, not too far. And then we'll play around with different angles and different lenses. Ralph, kiss that temple right there. And just give me a serious look. Right there, yep. Beautiful. And just part your lips a tad bit. Just put in some focus on the ring. Ooh, you should look at me right there. Awesome. Let me have you guys stand side by side, holding hands. Power pose. Hmm, to, to give her a little bit more curvature, I'm gonna have her just slightly bend that knee this way so it, it, it accentuates the curves. Um, that's good, but just turn it a little bit. Hold that right there, guys. And look straight at me. This atrium has a lot of beautiful leading lines, so now I'm just getting my wide shots first. Look at each other, guys. Perfect. And then look in opposite directions. So left and right, yep. Awesome. Beautiful, I'm coming in close. Get some mid shots. Look at each other one more time. <laughs> you making her blush, man. Beautiful. So since you're already in that position, Another tip that I like to use is, if the couple's already in that position, I try not to give them a pose that completely switches it up. If she's already holding his hand side by side, I may just give her a little micro adjustment just to turn towards him and maybe hold his arm. So it doesn't take too much effort with the dress and things like that. So I try my best to flow in between the poses as, a, as opposed to just completely switching them up. All right, so could you turn towards him? 
and kind of hold his arm like this with both of your hands. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And look straight towards me right here. Like, like that. I should look towards me. Ralph, you can look at me now. Nice. Beautiful. Let me get the back of your dress. So you can, actually you can stay where you are. Ralph, just hold her by the waist. Okay. And now you're gonna look back over your shoulder at me. Yep, perfect. Let me just move my light. Awesome. So I'm switching to my 85 to get some more intimate shots of the couple now. I still have my 28 to 70 on my other camera just in case I wanna get some versatile shots. Okay. Now, could you turn your back to me? Okay. Turn your back to me. Awesome. Come in front of her right here. Bring your arm around her waist. Uh, let's have you come around a little bit more. Yeah, and then one arm around her waist. One arm, other arm. Yep, this hand in your pocket. Aisha, look over your left shoulder. Yeah. Let me see. Ooh, that is epic. Guys, both of you look out this way to the future. Yep. Yep. And now you should look back at me. Nice. Beautiful. All right. Um, both of you turn towards me again. Turn towards me. Yeah. Yep. So bring your arms around her waist right there. Yeah. And kind of just kind of hold his arms right there. Feel him lean, lean back on him a little bit. Yes. Uh, a method that I like to use. I always call it the BS method. So if you ever find yourself stuck with a pose, like I say, always start with the safe ones, holding hands, just hold each other, look at each other and smile. But as you're doing that in your mind, you're trying to think of other unique ways to bend that pose into something a little bit more creative. But I always say, start off safe. The creative stuff will come as you're starting to feel the vibe of the couple. If you're trying to go right out the bat with that next viral pose, or that next pose that's gonna just put you over the top, you're gonna put a lot of expectations on yourself that might often find you disappointed. So don't put that pressure on yourself. Start off safe. The poses will come as you keep shooting. Say something in her ear. It could be anything, literally anything. <laughs> I think it worked. <laughs> so even though I told him to say something in her ear, my intention was to just get a shot of him saying something in her ear it created a laugh, which was a genuine moment. So a lot of times you can actually use an artificial pose to create a genuine moment from that. Nice. So while we're in that same position, I usually just take that right hand and hold his head. Boom. Close your eyes, Aisha, yep. Hold that. And Aisha, look at me. Part your lips a little bit. Beautiful. Epic. Love it, guys. Okay, so we're still here for the bride and groom portraits. We decided to switch to another location that I feel like has a lot more natural light. So I'm not gonna use my artificial lighting for this situation. I'm gonna do some solos of her first and then add him in because I feel like she hasn't gotten enough by herself yet. The groom usually has a lot more time. It's a lot less pressure. There's not hair and makeup and things going on. So I like to utilize the time after the ceremony or after the first look to get more shots of the bride solo as well as incorporate the groom afterwards. Nice. I have my 85 millimeter now. I've switched to my 1.2 85 millimeter. The only difference between the two lenses obviously is the aperture it goes to and the fact that the 85 millimeter 2.0 is a macro lens. So being that this is I guess you can call it the big boy of the Canon lenses. It's the L-grade lenses, meaning luxury grade lenses. It has a bit much better photo quality. The color quality is just a, a bit different, a lot sharper, a lot more intact. Uh, look down at your flowers again right there. Yep. Awesome. You gotta know how to set up the dress. We don't want the bride doing any work on that wedding day. A lot of times I even tell the bride don't even have her phone on the wedding day. So that way she's not worried about any little, you good over there? Oh, just like pull it down. Yeah, cool. Yeah, let's do flowers. Awesome. On the railing? 
Yeah, so kind of, could you kind of do something like that? Yeah, just keep doing that. I was shooting this way, but this side it has a lot more sunlight, so it looks more blown out. So I'm just switching sides because it's more even this way. Keep looking straight, that looks good. And then look towards me. Awesome, and then away, just past me. Perfect. Hold that right there. Beautiful. And then your eyes back at me. Nice. A few more. Beautiful. And then straight ahead at me right here. Um, straight on shots? No. Um, I'm using the 28 to 70 right now, so I'm actually doing a lot of wide and close-up shots. The ceremony or the reception might be coming up soon, so sometimes I like to switch back to my versatile lenses so I'm not worried about the limits of my location. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over there real quick to see how it looks and shoot across. I saw that if I go back here, I can get a lot more of this establishment, so I wanna get a really wide shot I like how you're looking away. Yep. Pick your chin up a little bit. Let's add the groom into this one. Ralph, and you're gonna stand right next to her. I right, you should scoot over a little bit. Can you? Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Ralph, bring your hand behind her a little bit. Yep, and then lean back on the rail. You lean on the rail? Okay. Yep. Bring your hand in your pocket. Look towards me here yep so now I'm just getting some more intimate shots of the couple I always try to squeeze as much as I can out of them before the ceremony because at the end of the day the bride and groom are the most important part of the day I'm gonna try to get as much as I can before the planner or someone comes to us and says hey we got to get started with the ceremony or they have to get to this next spot whichever is going on on the timeline I try to respect the timeline as much as I can but I do understand that the bride and groom portraits are that's what they're paying us for. Those are our clients and our number one priority. So I'm just gonna do some more intimate shots of them, switch up some different poses. I think we got a lot of shots wide, mid, um, with our strobe light. So now I'm just gonna get to some last second intimate shots of them and really wrap up with them before we head on to the ceremony. Nice, your left hand, bring it down his chest. Nice. And then Aisha, look at me. Beautiful, both of you look at me. Awesome. Touch heads right there. Nice. <laughs> both of you, both of you close your eyes. Nice. I used to part your lips a little bit. There we go. I used to look back at me. Perfect. Ralph, kiss her head one more time. Close your eyes. Just getting some wide shots and establishing shots. A lot of times venues actually like to see wide shots, so they use that as a marketing tool for their website and things like that. So it's a win-win situation. Um, I know when I first started, I used to find myself getting a lot of close-ups only, 50 millimeter to 85 millimeter. So I really had to train my mind to get every angle, wide, mid, and close-up. So that way, we're capturing the environment and we're capturing the intimacy of the couple as well. So, look this way, y'all. Chin up a little bit. Yep. Beautiful. Now we're good. Good job, guys. Good job. Your best to work around them and get some decor shots at least as much as you can before everyone else comes in. So let's talk about the positioning of the team for the ceremony. I'm usually right about here at the top of the aisle. If the videographer is there as well, they might be right next to me, but I like to talk to them as well to make sure that we're not in each other's way. So I'm shooting right down the aisle, straight on shots, either with a 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 
or 24 to 70. My second shooter, I like to place them along the sides, either with an 85 millimeter or a 70 to 200, getting those zoomed in shots in different perspectives. I also like to tell my second shooters to get shots of people in the crowd, whether they're laughing, smiling, reacting to the bride coming down, the emotional vows, what have you. But we do that until the recessional, where when they're coming down, I'm back at the middle of the aisle at the end, getting everyone coming down. And I also like to tell the bride and groom a lot of times to stop at the middle and kiss. And then we head on over to the reception. All right, so we have the groom coming down now. All the guests are usually turned back, looking at him come down, crowds cheering for him. Awesome. Cool. And then we'll have everybody else come down. We capture them. Once the bride is ready to come down to the aisle, guests usually stand up. Please rise for the bride. And we get her coming down as well. Second shooter is still roaming on the sides, getting those perspectives. I'm right here in the middle getting her to come down. So now the bride's coming down. I usually switch sides. My second shooter is usually on the other side getting the groom's reaction, whether he's crying or smiling or what have you, catching those moments. He's usually right there capturing the groom, and I'm just right here with them. Now, in this situation, it looks like I'm very close. Um, a lot of times wedding ceremonies aren't as close because I don't want to block the crowd too much. I don't want to be so distracting to the crowd. A lot of times the family sitting at the front, like the parents, siblings, or what have you, I don't want them to miss this moment because the photographer was standing in the way. So I like to get low, shoot up, try to find ways to not be as distracting. And then when it's time for the ceremony, I like to go away out of the aisle and not be too obtrusive to the crowd. The bride and groom's at the ceremony altar. Not really much going on. So at this point, you really just gotta try to find ways to switch it up and get different angles. I try to go on both sides to make sure I'm getting their perspective, uh, the bride's perspective, the groom's perspective, her looking at him, people in the crowd, again, getting their different reactions, which usually my second shooter is focused more on, but I'm still doing it as well. The ceremony is the part where you can really find yourself just standing around a lot. So I try to just find different ways to make it interesting to tell a story as opposed to just getting those straight on shots. All right, you should keep looking at Ralph. Yep. Beautiful. Keep holding his hand. Is it okay for me to laugh? Yep, that's fine. Yep, yep. That's fine. Oh my God. Wow. So I'm just moving around, getting different perspectives, trying not to stay in one spot, shooting the guests. Guests looking good. Awesome. Good stuff. Perfect. Getting different frames of different parts of their bodies, whether they're holding hands, looking at each other. I'll shoot over her shoulder, over his shoulder. Just try to switch it up, you know? Perfect, guys. Woo! Awesome. And stop right there, guys, real quick. Let me just have you guys kiss real quick one more time while the crowd cheer you on. You can be in the shot, you can be in the shot. Come a little closer, come a little closer, yep. Kiss one more time, kiss one more time. All right, and then y'all, yep. It's okay, it's okay. Awesome, so a lot of times I'll tell the bride and groom to stop in the middle of the aisle just to get another kissing shot. we're getting ready for the first dance of the reception. I usually just like to rotate the couple and get a bunch of different perspectives and angles. My second shooter is also there, rotating around the couple. We try not to cross paths too much so we're not in each other's shots. Same thing with the videographer. The roof is pretty low and it's white, so I'm gonna use my on-camera speed light to bounce off the roof and have a nice, soft, flattering light. When you bounce light from a roof source, it falls off on a couple for a very flattering look. So 
now for the cake cutting, I usually like to just get my straight on shots with my 28 to 70. I'll have an assistant with an off camera flash with a soft box, or I'll just use my speed light on camera to bounce it off the roof if it's a nice low ceiling or if it's white. My second shooter is always on the sides and the corners. Again, either using an 85 or a different lens just to get a, a unique perspective while I'm getting the straight on shots. Yep, make sure you're looking at each other, guys. Smile as you're cutting it. I'll have them either feed it to each other or do something goofy or something like that. Once we get those shots, I'll have them kiss and then we just get right back to what's going on in the reception schedule. Let's get a kiss, guys. Beautiful, hold that. So in terms of lighting, I'm using my off-camera flash, my strobe light with a 32-inch softbox. And I'm also using my 2870 because the room has a lot of beautiful decor, so I wanna be able to capture that along with the couple. 